Most of my followers are International Harvester fans and that's because you have good taste. There was a lot of farms uh, in, our, in my family. I came from a big family and so consequently uh, you know a lot of our family members chose different tractors. One of my brothers he worked for uh, what I would consider back in the 70s a pretty substantial uh, beef operation and they had John Deere tractors um, and we, we mostly had international back you know at our house in my sister's house which was right next door uh, but as the years progressed you know as most farmers are they buy what's what's available and what's affordable so you know at some point in the mid 80s when the international harvester dealerships dissip dissipated they just they just went away um, John Deere started showing up because that was all that was around really and one of the first tractors uh, that showed up was a John Deere 4430 and I will I will save that one for another another day. Uh, but what I kind of want to pick up where I left off with the last John Deere video, and that was with the, the 10 series. And I kind of want to go, you know, 1964 to 72 when the when the new 30 series came out. And I told you in the last video that you know if I had bought a brand new 630 or 730 in 19 early 1960, and then you know a few months later they came out with a the 3020, 4020, I'd be go over to the dealership and, and uh, you know demanding a trade because just the features alone were enough to, to make you want to trade the tractor in. But in 1964 uh, John Deere came out with the 20 series in some of the some of the tractors and the first two that came out were the the, the 3020 and the 4020 and they were they were new designs they had better more efficiency uh, power shift came out which was which was huge um, they were a lot better tractors. They had more horsepower. Uh, LP fuel uh, was still around, but gas engines were kind of starting to come out of favor. Uh, so a lot of the tractors, the 4020, 3020s, were diesel, which is what we had. We had the 4020 diesels, and we had two of those. Uh, and they still have one 4020 diesel, and they have a 4320, which which is a kind of an anomaly, but that that's a um, a really nice tractor. Fifty twenty uh, was a, was John Deere's biggest tractor at the time, and this thing was a beast. They had a row crop version. This is a standard, uh, which was a fixed front end, fixed front tread version. And this thing right here was was pretty much the the king of the king of the fields when it came out. And they had to design a, a special tire just for this this tractor. It had so much horsepower, but a really nice machine. By the by, the mid 1960s, because uh, I've told you before, and I, st I still would would maintain that opinion that the 1010 and 2010 were junk. Uh, they had a lot of issues with it, with the motors and those, among other things. They rectified that in the mid 60s because John Deere became a worldwide company, and in doing so, they had a, a European market in Argentina, and then of course Australia, and then you know every every place eventually. But the worldwide tractor was not available with the narrow front end. It, they pretty much were these tractors are here. This is the 2030, which was in the early 70s and they kept the same design, but the 2020 looked just like it. Uh, 1020, pretty much, you know, they were all pretty much identical tractors. And these tractors were German and uh, they, they, were, they were really good tractors, but they didn't have a narrow front end on them. So what John Deere did, uh, and I'm just gonna use this 4020 here just because I wanna hold something in my hand while I'm talking. Uh, they came out with the 2510 in like 1965 because like I said the the 2020 1020 were only available with a wide front end tractor and you could get different configurations but they didn't have a narrow front end so John Deere still had a lot of customers that wanted to put cultivators you know on these tractors or corn pickers and I know just a side note mounted corn pickers really started to fall out of fashion towards the, the end of the 60s because it's just a, a lot of work to put the thing on and take it off and then pull type harvesters. You know, here's one here. I have to pull out some international on this. Uh, I can't do a video without something international, but pull type machines became uh, a lot more favorable at that time. But in the mid sixties, there was still a desire, still a need for an arrow front tractor. So John Deere answered with a 2510. Now the 2510, even though it had a 10 on it, was really a, uh, you know came out with the, with the advanced 20 series tractors so it's kind of like a like a 2010 3010 cross 
uh, with a narrow front end on it. Very good tractor. And the 2520 came out after that. It was even better. But John Deere came out, even in the early uh, 70s, they had the 6030, which was a giant tractor, and it had the new 30 series name on it, but it still looked like uh, the, the 20 series tractors. It was just a giant machine. So they had the, the um, 4320, which, which we have one of those, a 4520, 4620. They had the, the 8020, which was this big tractor. It was an articulated tractor. Uh, and then they, you know, they had introduced the whole line of matched equipment to work with those tractors. And I'm going to show you today some, some John Deere video. And I've got a lot of photos to, to show you. I've got tons and tons of, of brochures. And what I'm going to do is I'm just digitizing all this stuff and then I'm eBaying it before something bad happens to it. And then I, I have, I'm, you know, it's, it's gone. But I've got a, a lot of uh, brochures that I personally picked up from dealerships in the 70s and 80s because we went to the dealership all the time. And, and you, it was a, it was a, uh, an event that I didn't go. I always wanted to go to the dealership and, and sometimes I'd get a toy tractor. Most of the time I didn't. But I always, always, always had a stack of brochures and, and uh, the salespeople always thought that was kind of funny. I remember riding the, the little pedal tractors around on the John Deere dealership and you know they didn't care. It was a lot different back then in the 70s. But uh, anyway, without any more ado, I wanted to show, show you today John Deere basically from 1964 to 1972 when these are my favorite tractors. Uh, These are my favorite John Deere tractors, and this is the classic John Deere tractor. This is a 4430, and it came out in 1972, the year I was born. And I remember, you know, one of our neighbors had a brand new 4030, and I got to ride on that as a kid. And, and you know, he still has that tractor today, and it's got a million hours on it, but it still looks still looks this good. Keep it up, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate my viewers, and some days I see you know, 500 or 1,000 people watched a video, and I just can't believe that that many people took time out of their day to watch to watch me. So I, I thank you very much for that. Uh, and now on to the, to the videos. Beat the clock. Raise the speed limits on jobs. Move ahead to farming in bigger terms. New John Deere 3020 and 4020 tractors are built for these farming terms, enlarging upon all the advantages of the 3010 and 4010 tractors they succeed. Now, you'll shift straight through without clutching between all forward and reverse gears with new power shift transmission available on 3020 and 4020 tractors you'll be in complete command of every soil condition. Hold every job in the palm of your hand. You'll find beefed up power in these new tractors, up to 64 horsepower in the new 3020, up to 88 horsepower in the new 4020. Here are tractors that fill two of your biggest farming shortages, help and time. New 3020 and 4020 tractors for row crop farming, and for grain and rice farming or any operation requiring a powerful standard tractor. A new 3020 row crop utility combining the advantages of low profile stability with ample under axle clearance for cultivating and a new 3020 for grove and orchard operations. Completing the lineup, a new 3020 high crop for work in tall bushy crops. On new 3020 and 4020 tractors equipped with power shift, you actually tune tractor performance to the job. You literally play it by ear. Shifting under load between any of eight forward and four reverse selections without clutching. With one lever, you match power output and ground travel speed to changing soil conditions and changing job operations non-stop. Pit a power shift 3020 or 4020 against your toughest tillage. Play it by ear. Power shift through tough spots non-stop. Power to drive wheels is continuous as you shift, so forward motion is constant. 
Operate PTO machines at full capacity using power shift to prevent slugging. Shift up, down, or into neutral without stopping PTO operation without clutching. In tight situations like this, with several operations to perform almost simultaneously, power shift down instead of throttling back. Hydraulic power and pull power stay up as you give yourself time to steer, brake, raise implements, or stop PTO machines. Power shift John Deere tractors are real hummingbirds on shuttle jobs, loading, stacking, or reversing to return a tripped bottom. You change directions on the go without gear clash, without clutching. It's goodbye clutch slipping to start heavy loads rolling. Power shift into a low gear to ease away, then without clutching, shift through progressively faster gears to transport speed. For downhill braking, just power shift down. Direct gear drive provides positive holdback. Now hear this. That's the broad range of governed engine RPM the new 3020 and 4020 tractors provide for fine-tuning power and travel speed in whatever gear you select. This 4020 speed chart shows how power shift gear ratios have been ideally spaced to utilize the broad range of governed RPM. It shows how gear spacing and engine speed range provide a perfect speed and power combination for every job. With beefed up power backing up your speed selection, constant jockeying of the power shift selector lever just isn't in the cards. Power shift is not one of those crutch gimmicks used to make up for lack of power or poor gear ratio spacing. Nor is it a fluid drive that under load can spin out internally and waste power. Rather, new power shift transmits power through gears and shafts. It's a positive direct drive. With power shift, you select the right gear for each job manually. And hydraulic power takes over instantaneously to engage the gear you select. This power shift inching pedal is provided for lining up the tractor with implements for hookup, for maneuvering in close quarters, and for rapid stops. This pedal also serves as a safety device. Only with the pedal depressed can the tractor be started. New 3020 and 4020 tractors are also available with time-proved synchro range transmission, providing all the advantages of beefed up parts to handle increased horsepower practical gear ratios, broad speed ranges, and direct gear drive. Introduced on new generation tractors, this transmission features synchronized shifting within four ranges. Power shift or synchro range, new 3020 or 4020 tractors with beefed up power really crack the whip on work output, provide still greater work capacity than their predecessors. Horsepower is beefed way up, up to 88 horsepower in the new 4020. Up to 64 horsepower in the new 3020. It's the power leader of its class. With either of the new, more powerful John Deere tractors, you'll cross the finish line on your toughest jobs in record time. You'll have power to pull bigger loads on the drawbar power to pull them at speeds that'll put your work on schedule and keep it there. Will the operator please turn the record? Drawbar pounds pull of new 3020 and 4020 tractors is also beefed up substantially with increased pull at the drawbar delivered in the higher more practical work gears third, fourth, and fifth, you will move large equipment through tough spots at a steady pace, an extra acres per day pace. 3020 and 4020 power for PTO work is up, powered up so you can step up to PTO machines with bigger appetites. 
Put a 4020 ahead of a two row forage harvester in high density corn or maize. Or mount a two row picker sheller on the 3020 and watch work output per hour go up. The live heavy duty powertrain in new 3020 and 4020 tractors provides 1,000 RPM power outlets to front and rear with provision for 540 RPM drive to the rear. Change speeds by simply inserting the proper stub shaft in the PTO outlet. As the stub shaft is inserted, splines on the shaft engage the proper gear arrangement. In this case, you see the power flow of the 1000 RPM drive and what a drive it is. Smooth, steady and strong. Hydraulic power of new 3020 and 4020 tractors is up to control the heavier equipment you'll use with these more powerful tractors, to handle integral tools bigger than many of your present drawn implements. You'll flick the controls on cylinder-operated hookups and get positive, lightning-fast response. These new breakaway couplings on 3020 and 4020 tractors enable you to hook up under pressure and to unhook with a light pull on the lines. Built-in weight of the new 3020 and 4020 tractors is up, boosting traction so you'll get full benefit from the beefed up power. The new 4020 diesel row crop, for instance, has a 500 pound weight edge over the 4010. The new 3020 diesel standard scales 1,500 pounds heavier than its predecessor. Heavier, but just as quick. The new 3020 and 4020 tractors have added muscle, not fat. They retain the modern functional styling of their new generation predecessors. The beefing up has been done internally. Through transmission and final drives, Parts have been strengthened to handle the increased horsepower dependably and efficiently. There's nothing halfway about these new tractors. The advantage of owning a new 3020 or 4020 doesn't stop halfway with increased tractor work capacity. This advantage is matched by comfort and convenience features designed to help you capitalize on that increased work capacity designed to reduce fatigue so you'll be able to see more work through to the finish each day. Controls are grouped to divide operations between right and left hand. The platform is spacious, providing ample standing area with room to spare for your water jug. You can check out all systems on this easy to read control panel in a quick glance. Even under a glaring sun, it's easy to spot the position of red indicator needles against the white dial backgrounds set in a non-reflective black panel. Hydraulic control levers are fanned out for easy operation of one lever without accidental movement of the others. Knob shapes make controls easy to identify by touch, so you don't have to take your eyes from the work you're doing. The PTO control lever is handily located to the right of the dash panel. Moving the lever forward engages the PTO smoothly. On power shift tractors, hydraulic power handles actual engaging and disengaging of the PTO powertrain. This is it, the most comfortable seat ever put on any tractor, bar none. It's even more comfortable than the posture seat introduced on new generation tractors. And you know how owners bragged about that one. The front of the new seat cushion is rounded and sloped for better thigh support. You sit comfortably even when turned sideways to watch trailing equipment. Backrest is thicker, armrest is wider. These new John Deere tractors are built bigger all the way through. Built to handle farming on bigger terms, whether you work in row crops, vast wheat fields or rice ponds, hayland and feedlots, groves or orchards, or king-sized vegetable gardens. New John Deere tractors deliver an unbeatable combination of stepped-up horsepower for increased work output, beefed-up power for dependable performance, 
and power shift for efficient, cost-cutting power utilization. Take your John Deere dealer up on his invitation to power shift a new 3020 or 4020 on your farm for a day. Work it, no play it by ear, against the toughest conditions on your farm. Get the facts straight from the tractor on this latest step forward in the new generation of power. No matter what type of farming you do, when you want to power up with a tractor that will stand up under years of hard work, move up to a John Deere tractor from the long green line. The John Deere credit plan will fit the power size of your choice into your budget comfortably on terms suited to your farm income schedule. You'll be a farming success.
Here is tractor versus load once more. This time, the bucket of an industrial wheel tractor works against a heavy load in a test of strength of the frame, front axle assembly, and the hydraulic system. The tractor's performance is checked under various control loads. How's this for rough going? These bumps and jolts are far more severe than the tractor is likely to encounter in any actual field work. The quick turn provides a measure of the tractor's handling ability. Rollomatic and steering assemblies really get a workout here. Working in snow is not an unusual sight in the torture area. Here again, data from each operation is carefully recorded. The lugging power of the tractor is given a real challenge. Working in these severe field conditions with a toolbar cultivator provides an excellent overall test for the tractor. The industrial side of the John Deere tractor family also comes in for its share of abuse. This crawler loader is assigned the difficult task of leveling a ridge, turning wasteland into cropland. Hour upon hour, season upon season, the test tractors are put to work with various implements. This heavy For five cropping seasons, these experimental tractors work in all types of crop and soil conditions. Only after hundreds of thousands of hours is design finally approved. The field test gray of the experimental tractors gives way to the familiar John Deere green and yellow, and the new generation of power is on its way to the men who have such a large part in making America great. The men who till her soil and harvest her crops, work her rich woodlands for pulp and lumber. <laughs>